Looking to give back this holiday season? Donate to the Army Historical Foundation. For 40 years, the Army Historical Foundation has ensured our nation never forgets the sacrifices of those who serve. As the Army's nonprofit partner, the Foundation constructed the National Museum of the United States Army. The Foundation's work also extends beyond the museum's walls, restoring artifacts, touring historic battlefields, and remembering all we owe to America's Army veterans. Donate today at ArmyHistory.org. The United States Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Border Patrol agents enjoy great pay, outstanding federal benefits, and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives. If you are looking for a way to serve something greater than yourself, consider the United States Border Patrol. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash careers slash USBP. That's cbp.gov slash careers slash USBP. Across the rugged Indian Territory rides a tall young man on a mission of mercy. His medical bag strapped on one hip, his six-shooter on the other. This is Dr. Six-Gun. Another episode in the exciting adventure series, Dr. Six-Gun. Matson, M.D., was the gun-toting frontier doctor who roamed the length and breadth of the old Indian territory. Friend and physician to white man and Indian alike, the symbol of justice and mercy in the lawless west of the 1870s, this legendary figure was known to all as Dr. Six-Gun. Territory, there was open war between the sheepherders and the cattlemen. The cattlemen did not like the sheep because they ate the grass too close. Finally, after much violence, the sheepherders were driven to the north, Montana and Idaho. A few remained behind. They had no chance, though. Their sheep were soon destroyed and they became a pitiful, half starved bunch of people separated from each other and outcast by the cattlemen and cowboys. I did not feel this way, however. To me? I am Pablo, a peddler, a gypsy, a man of many travels. What? And that is midnight. He is a raven. He's still in the horse. He's still in the horse. With the tongue of a stool pigeon. But to return to the sheepmen, as I said, I did not hate these men. Doc six gun. Doc. No, nor did my friend Doc Six gun feel this way. He judged a man on the conduct of his life and not on his profession or the clothes he wore. Well, one night, it was just before Christmas time, we had a blizzard in the territory, one of the worst in many years. I was in the Bull Rock Cafe at the time, uh, trying to keep warm. Right, O'Shea! Hey, O'Shea, another one, please, before my blood turns right. to ice. <laughs> Coming up, Pablo. Yeah, here you are. Uh, by the way, you ain't seen the doc, have you? <laughs> oh, he should be coming back soon. Why? You know them sheep herders live down by the Arroyo? Ah, uh, the uh, Munoz woman. Her and her kid and that mm. skinny old man, I, uh, I guess he's a grandfather. Yes, I know them. Is something wrong? The old man was in here a while back looking for doc. Oh, where is he now? Waiting outside. In this cold? Well, I told him he was welcome to sit behind the stove, but he just looked at me with that crazy look of his and walked out. <laughs> I will fetch him. Hey, old man! This is not... Come, come inside! I'm Doc Six Gun's friend. Oh, ah, it's good to be warm. <laughs> well, tell me, why do you wait outside? Well, to tell the truth, I, I am temporarily without finances. Oh? I know how these ignorant common feel about sheep herders, and since I could not afford a drink... I, Pablo, would like the honor of buying you a drink. But I could not take advantage. Oh. Well... Perhaps a small one. <laughs> oh, say, whiskey. Uh, tell me, uh, when will the doctor return? Oh, he should be stopping here soon. My grandson, Tomasito, he has the fever upon him. Oh? I tried to tell his mother it was nothing, but she will not listen. Well, salut, senor. You are an old man to walk down here in a storm? <sighs> I am temporarily without a horse. 
tell me the uh, the child has no father? Uh, the father was killed in a gun battle with some cowmen. Uh, they fought over a water hole. Oh, I see. Uh, the fever, uh, when did the boy begin? Uh, when the storm came upon us, his mother sent him out to find the sheep. We have only 22 sheep, and they would soon die in a blizzard. Oh, did he find them? Uh, no. Oh. He spent the whole night and day searching for them. Uh, when he came back, he was cold and wet. His foot had the frostbite. And the fever and the pain. Oh, oh Doc! Wow! Pablo, where's the Doc? Oh. I'm half frozen. I wouldn't go out again tonight for all the... Doc! Oh, Pablo. I am... Um, I'm afraid we are going out again. Huh? What's that? Well, this is Joaquin Munoz. You know, the sheep people from the Arroyo. Ah, what is it, Mr. Munoz? He walked all the way to town. His grandson has a fever and a frostbitten foot. How old's the boy? Eleven years, Doctor. The fever rages on his brow. Can he move the foot? Only with great pain. All right. Pablo, can you use your wagon? My horse is all tucked up. Certainly. Come on, old man. Let's go. in my wagon through the snow to the homestead of Joaquin Munoz and his daughter Maria. The shack was pitted. It was made sod, lumps of dirt piled one on the other and mortised with clay. Inside was Maria, a shabbily dressed woman of 30 and the sick child, Tamefito. Maria? Oh, Papa, you have come. I brought El Doctor. Maria, how is your boy? Out of his head with fever. Come quickly, Doctor. find him. I couldn't see in the snow. I tried to find him. I'm a Cito. Hmm. You hear me? This is Doc Six Gun. All night I called. Diablo. Diablo. But he didn't come. Diablo is the lead goat. Hmm. A good Spanish lead goat works hmm. better even than an Angora. Hush, Padre. I will have to reduce that fever. I'll give him some quinine. Uh, Pablo, you get some snow from outside. We'll make cold compresses. Maria, you rub the boy's feet. Joaquin, I want you to build up the fire and put a pan of water on it to steam. All right, sir. We'll take care of it. How is he, Doctor? He'll sleep for a while now. Doctor? It's going to be a long time before he can walk again. Oh. He'll have to massage that foot and work it every day. As for the rest, good food. Food? Doctor, our sheep are gone. The boy cannot work. The old man is too old, and his head is filled with dreams anyway. You have any money at all? I have $20 from my husband. It is all we had left after the cattlemen ruined us. Use that for food. When it runs out, you go to the general store and tell Hanson to put it on my bill. On your bill? Oh, no, I cannot do that. Maria, you do as I say. I'll stop by tomorrow morning. Have another look at the bill. Oh, muchas gracias, doctor. Muchas gracias. Softly, my child. Softly. Grandpapa. Grandpapa is here, Tomasito. I... I feel funny, Grandpapa. There is nothing to worry about. The doctor said I... I won't be able to walk. If you cannot walk, you will ride. Ride? We have no horse, Grandpapa. Then we will get a horse. In fact, I'm planning to buy you a white pony for Christmas. A white pony? Did I not say it? But, but white ponies cost much money. I have been saving the money for just such an emergency. I promise you a white pony. That is something for which to get well, eh? Think of riding about on a white pony. Mama, did you hear? Grandpapa is going to buy me a white pony. Oh, Padre, it is cruel to lie to the boy. Tomasito, grandson, look into my eyes, eh? So... Now, I, Joaquin Munoz, swear to you by the Virgin Mother that I will get you a white pony for Christmas. It is only three days old. By Christmas. Now, do you believe me? Yes, Grandpapa. I believe you. Good. Then it is all settled. You will try very hard to get well. And on Christmas morning, there in the corral, you will find a white pony and a saddle. Oh. Now, you go to sleep. And dream about this, huh? See, Grandpapa, I will 
dream about the white pony. Oh, oh Padre. You have done a terrible thing to this child. A terrible, terrible thing. The next morning, the blizzard stopped. But the ground was packed with white snow. Early, Doc Seasgun and I rode out to the Munoz Ranch to see how it went with the boy. The old man had gone out of the house... But the mother was there. Doctor, come in, please. How is he? I do not like it. He has the fever again. He lies so... like a sleepwalker. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, pull back the covers, Maria. Yeah. There. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Is it bad? He's developed a blood infection in that foot. Oh, doctor, he will be all right, you know? He's such a small boy. So brave. Maria... To be perfectly honest with you, it can go either way. Oh. He'll be fighting this infection for the next two or three days. If he has the will and the strength to lick it, he'll be all right. If not... Oh, no. He must. He must. The white pony. Uh, what's he saying? Something about a, a white pony? Oh, the old man has promised him a white pony for Christmas. He meant no harm. It was only to help him want to get well. But it would kill the boy when he finds there is no pony. <laughs> I am interested in the purchase of a white pony. So do you know somebody oh, who has one for sale? A white pony? <laughs> Where are you going to get money for a white pony? The money I have. The pony I wish to find. Well, let me see now. Uh, Blinky. Uh, Blinky Sanders. Uh, yeah? What's on your mind, O'Shea? You still got that albino lead pony? Yeah, I still got him. Why? Old man here says you want to buy a white pony. Hmm? You uh, serious, old man? Of course. Have I not said it? Well, I got a pretty little white cow pony. He's a little bit too small for working a rope, so I'd be willing to sell him. Takes him. How much are you willing to pay for him? I thought if he's a good pony and young, perhaps fifteen dollars. <laughs> fifteen dollars? If he's an excellent pony for say a small boy, I might even pay twenty. Listen, old man, I wouldn't even consider selling a dead horse for twenty dollars. How much do you want for him? One hundred and fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty. That's a price. But uh, if I tell you the pony is for a small boy, you will be broken-hearted unless. Go on, go away, vamoose, Sam. Huh? Hey, O'Shea, huh? give me another glass of that snake pies. But, Senor. Now you heard the man, Grandpa. Senor, I am Joaquin Munoz, and I will not be spoken to like that. In my younger days, I would have killed you for such disrespect to a fellow human. <laughs> will you listen, there? I'm sorry, Grandpa. Now. Stop bothering the customers and Vamos, huh? Very well. Uh, Vamos, like good fellow. Hey, old man. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? My name is Connors. Willie Connors. Yes? Well, I, uh, I was standing at the bar in the bull run, and I couldn't help overhearing what you said about looking for a white pony for a little feller. You uh, have such a horse? <laughs> Matter of fact, I got one of the prettiest little albinos you ever seen. And I have to sell her because I'm pulling up stakes in the railroad in east in an hour. You must have missed part of the conversation. I have only $20. Oh, shucks. I don't care nothing about the money, mister. I just want Trooper to have a good home. Well, what is this, horse? Got tied right over there across the street from Bull Run. See her? She's a very pretty horse. You, uh, got that $20? Uh, yes. All right. You hand it over, I'll make out a bill of sale. I'll even throw in the saddle, eh? Mil gracias, senor. <laughs> you are very kind. Maria! Gosh, you will waken the boy. Maria, come and see quickly. What is it? Look out in the back. The back where? What is it? Look, woman, <coughs> why you stand there? Oh, very well, I... Is it not a pretty pony? A white pony? But where? How? Did I not tell you I would get the boy a pony? Did you steal it? Maria, did I bring up my daughter thus to insult her father? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Padre. Where did you get it? A kind-hearted cowboy sold it to me. Sold it? 
For what? For money. For twenty dollars. Twenty dollars? Where would you... Oh, no. Padre, you... You didn't take the money. Why not? What is money compared to the happiness of a young boy? What is it? What is it but the difference between starvation and life? Padre, that money was all we had. Everything else is gone. The sheep are lost in the blizzard. The boy is too sick to move. He needs food and medicine. This pony will be his medicine. Oh. <laughs> Mama. Grandpapa. Shh, he waits. Here, my child. Grandpapa. I dreamed of the white pony. I dreamed he was here in the house. I dreamed I heard him. I... I hear him, Grandpapa. Yes, Tomasita. You hear him. Then... Then there really is a white pony. And I'll see him on the Christmas. Did I not swear it? Mama, did you hear? It's true, isn't it, Mama? There is really a pony. Yes, Tomasito. Yes, there is really a pony. The saints help us and have mercy on us. next day was the day before Christmas. The morning was clear and bright when Buck Six Gun and I rode to the Munoz homestead to see the boy again. Can you move your toes, Hamasito? Oh. oh, it hurts. Try again, huh? No. All right, that's all, boy. Well, doctor? He's still fighting the infection, but he's got a lot of will to live. All he talks of the white pony. Yeah. I'm afraid we we ought to tell him now that there is no pony, Maria. If he wakes up tomorrow... Oh, there is no need to tell him. We have a pony. What? That is right, Doctor. Last night, the old man took our savings, all of it, and bought a pony. Well, I... Come, have... come outside. I will show him to you. See? Uh, where did you uh, uh, buy this horse, Joaquin? A man named Connors. The kind of cowboy he sold him to me. Doc, look, here comes a couple of men on his back. Why, it's O'Shea. Yes, and that Blinky Sanders. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, well, I see you got here first, Doc. What's wrong, Blinky? Wrong? Now, that stinking old sheep herder stole my pony. That's what's wrong. This is my pony, senor. Yeah? Well, how come it's got my saddle on him with my initials on it? Your saddle? But it was sold to me by a man named Connors. I have a piece of paper. I don't which... care if you got a whole book. Untie him, O'Shea. We'll take him back. All right, I'll leave No, him. you cannot do that. He's my horse. Twenty dollars I paid for him. Uh, Doctor Blinky, leave that one. He'll invent a bigger one, Doc. If you wasn't a crazy old man, I'd shoot you down, sheep herder. And if you try anything like this, it could, maybe I will. Now, come on, boy. Here. Yeah. Uh, Stop uh, uh, me, uh, Take it easy, Joaquin. But the horse is mine. See here. Here is the paper. Willie Connors. Pablo, you ever hear of a Willie Connors? Connors? No. Well, there's no one by that name around the bull run. The money. Look, uh, Joaquin, somebody took you for that $20, sold you a horse, didn't even belong to him. You mean I have been swindled? I'm afraid so. Maria. Well? The pony is no more. What? Gone. It did not belong to the man who sold it. We have been swindled. Swindled? No pony? No pony. No money. Nothing. Tell the boy. I cannot. You must. No, no. It, it would kill him. Then I will. Maria, as I am your father, I ask you, do not tell the boy yet. Give me some time. Where are you going? I'm going outside. First I will pray to Santiago and San Rafael. Then... I will do what the saints tell me to do. Santiago, San Rafael, listen to me, please. I'm an old man and much given to telling lies. I do not do to hurt someone, but only because without a few lies... It is so hard for me to exist. I look upon my grandson and my daughter, and I see how thin they grow and how pale the skin, and it makes a great pain in my throat. I have not been a very religious man these past years. I have not spoken to you for many months. 
On the other hand, the saints have not spoken to me. So, perhaps there is a little slackness on both sides, no? Now, I ask you what I must do. My Tomasito, my grandson, he is very sick. All that keeps him alive is the image of this white pony before his eyes. Tomorrow on the day of our Lord, he expects to see it and to touch it. And if it is not there, then he will know that I have lied. And his mother is lied. And I'm afraid he will die. So, I ask you, Santiago and San Rafael, give me strength to do what I must do, eh? I'm an old man, and without your help, I do nothing. Amen. Wake <laughs> <laughs> up, boys! It's the night before Christmas, and it's all on the house. Drink up! It was the night before Christmas, and all in the house, not a creature was sober, not even the mouse. <laughs> hey, Pablo, where's the duck? Duck? Oh, well, he went out on the call. He <laughs> should be back soon. Oh. Uh, Blinky, ain't uh, you drinking? Mm, sure, sure. Well, <laughs> why so sad? Why not? What kind of a Christmas is it for a cowboy? Huh? 2,000 miles from home. Nobody to talk to but a bunch of drunken cowboys. All we want is to be where somebody cares enough to cook us up a meal. Well, I got tiny barbecue and a dozen turkeys right now. It ain't, it ain't the same, O'Shea. Ain't the same at all. Well, now, there's no need to put the wet blanket over the rest of us. You know, she... Blinky is right. Confound it, right or wrong. Let's have no sadness in the Bull Run Cafe on this night. Now, I want every man jack of you passed out on the floor by midnight. <laughs> well, here's the Doc. Merry Christmas, Doc. Give me a cup of black coffee, O'Shea. Make it strong. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Doc. Doc, is uh, something wrong? I just came from the Munoz place. The boy? I uh, stopped by there this evening on my way back to the Lazy Sea Ranch. Good thing I did, too. If I hadn't... Hey, hey, Blinky. What's going on? That old man is out there by your horse. What, again? Hey, you now, now, put that gun away. He ain't done nothing yet. Well, he'd better not. He's just standing out there talking to the pony. Now, you keep an eye on him. Yeah, I'm going good. around out back and sneak All up right. behind him. Yeah, you go. Steady. Steady now, horse. No, no. Try not to make too much noise. It will only make it more difficult for old Joaquin to steal you. Easy now, easy. Come on, man. Untie the rope. Untie it. I have told lies. Never before have I stolen. Never have I been dishonorable. Well, you know for that. Small boy waits and you have promised the horse in the morning. Softly now. Mother de Dios. Why does my hand shake so easy? The rope. No, no. I cannot do it. No, Tomasito, forgive me, child. I can't steal. I cannot. Hey, oh, man. Oh, I... oh. If I was you, I'd stay away from that horse, eh? It's, um, it's a cold night, so why don't you get on home where you belong? See, of course, I was just petting him. Good night. Uh, good night. Merry Christmas to you, senor. Well, Blanky, yeah, he, he was just looking at the horse. <coughs> Give me a stiff one, O'Shea. I need it. Right. Hey, Doc, what are you looking so down about? Oh, he is just had a very hard case. On Christmas Eve? That's too bad. Now, who was it? The Munoz boy. I mean the sheep herder's kid? He sick bad? He had a frostbitten foot, and gangrene <laughs> was beginning to set in. Tonight, I had to operate. Holy smoke. Some Christmas present, huh? It'll be worse in the morning, Blinky. Tomasito thinks that he's going to get a white pony for Christmas. You mean 
That's why the old man... Yeah. Was... Those people are starving to death. They've lost their livestock, their savings, now that the boys. <laughs> and to make matters worse, they're sheep herders, and nobody seems to care if they live or die. Guess that's the worst of it. Linky was just saying earlier how he felt pretty much the same way. Like nobody cares if he lived or died. Here's a coffee, Doc. Extra strong. Thanks, O'Shea. Guess I'll take it over and sit down. Hey, Doc. Just a minute. Yeah? Now, listen, Doc. Here we all been sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves on Christmas. And... Well, heck, Doc, I, I think we ought to do something for those sheep herders. What do you have in mind, Link? Well, I ain't got much, Doc. About all a cowboy has is his saddle and a couple of horses, but... Well, I'd be willing to give that pony to the boy. Then I... Might as well throw in the saddle. That'd be quite a gift, Link. <laughs> Heck, Doc, I, I can always get another pony. That one's too light for a rope anyway. Doc? Doc, I got an idea. Why don't we all chip in? See? Yeah. About it, see? Each man yeah. gives something. What? Yeah. Livestock or, or some food. Well, what, say, some whatever each man can see. give. Yeah. Then, then we'll get some kerosene lamps. Go up there and maybe sing a few songs to cheer the boy out. What do you say, fellas? Come here, Cowboy, for seventy. And so it came to pass that night in Frenchman's Ford that a bunch of half-drunk cowboys and ranch owners drove a great herd of cattle, pigs, sheep, and horses up the hill to the humble ranch of Joaquin Munoz. There they stood outside and sang Christmas carols until the old man came out with two jugs of wine he had made from last year's grapes. And everybody wished everybody else a Merry Christmas. And the next morning, Ramosito Munoz woke to find a beautiful white pony standing outside his window. Most of the men in Frenchman's Ford slept late that morning. And in their dreams, there was much goodwill toward men. And in the valley of Frenchman's Ford, there was peace on the earth. You have been listening to Dr. Sixgun. Doc Sixgun is played by Carl Weber and Pablo by William Griffiths. Today's script was written by George Leppard. Heard in the cast were Bryna Rayburn as Maria, Santos Ortega as Joaquin, David Pepper as Tomasito, William Keane as O'Shea, and Tom Howland as Blinky. Dr. Six Gun is directed by Fred Way. to give back this holiday season? Donate to the Army Historical Foundation. For 40 years, the Army Historical Foundation has ensured our nation never forgets the sacrifices of those who serve. As the Army's nonprofit partner, the Foundation constructed the National Museum of the United States Army. The Foundation's work also extends beyond the museum's walls, restoring artifacts, touring historic battlefields, and remembering all we owe to America's Army veterans. Donate today at ArmyHistory.org. Heading downtown to a museum, sporting event, show, or for holiday shopping? Plan ahead for the Red Line service changes starting Monday, December 18th through Saturday, December 30th. Free shuttle buses will replace trains between DuPont Circle and Gallery Place. For more detailed information and travel alternatives, call 202-637-7000 or visit wmata.com, W-M-A-T-A.com.